this time and preach the word of God to us. Let's pray for our pastor together. Heavenly Father, we love you. We're so fortunate today, Lord, to be able to have this opportunity to be here to hear the word of God preached. I pray, Lord, you'll touch us that we might hear what you have for us and anoint our pastor that he might speak the words of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Creasy. Thank you, Brother Mark. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible said, the Bible said that the apostle, the apostle said it, if the judgment must first begin at the house of God. And if the righteous, are you ready? Scarcely be saved. Where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? If the righteous just barely make it. You know, Jesus told, uh, uh, issued a rebuke there and said, and, and your righteousness has got to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees or you will in no wise enter in. He talked about how the scribes and Pharisees pay tithes and give and done this and done that. He said, but your righteousness has got to be that. That's what he said. I don't know what he meant for sure, but, in which, but I know what he said. And having said that, and said the part where Paul come back and said that if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sin of the ungodly appear? You take all that in consideration, I think it spells, you better dig in. I think that's what that spells. We better dig in. Praise the Lord. Sister Chrissy, wonderful job as always. Thank you for teaching the word of the Lord. Letting us know there's opportunity. But we don't do it if we don't want to do it. If you don't minister to anybody, if you don't ever talk to anybody, if you don't ever invite anybody, don't ever say a kind word to anybody, don't ever offer any kind of kind gesture, you don't want to. Because there's plenty of people out there that's hungry and starving and needing something. This needs somebody to put the arm around the shoulder. And say, why don't you go to church with me or why don't you do that? There's somebody there. The book of Luke chapter 19, everybody say, preach, preacher. Preach, preacher. Praise the Lord. Verse 1, Joseph. Praise the Lord. God is so good. I'm telling you the truth. This world is a wilderness. And I am ready. For and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans. Listen, and chief among the publicans and was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before, got in got in front of the crowd, ran on up a ways, climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, that meant when he came to a place where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when he saw it, they all, and when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that was a sinner, or that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I take an anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to thy house. For as much as he also, I get it, put that word also. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man come to seek and save that which was lost. Just a few minutes this morning on the subject. A little man meets a big God. Lay your Bibles down and lift your hands to the Lord. Say their course, Sherry. Rebecca, in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, we appreciate you today. God, we want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Bless this congregation, these that are here, these young people, these adults, God, that are here today. Bless each one. Father, let somebody leave here today encouraged in the name of Jesus. Everybody say amen. You can see that God bless you. A little man meets a big God. I just want to say we're serving a big God. A God that can do anything. I love this setting that we're looking at here today. We To look at to look, just look around sometimes people. You look at people sometimes and, and, and to you or to me, it seems that they got everything that the world has to offer. Right. You see people how, and I've seen people and I, you, I know you have, it seems like anything they touch or do turns good. You know, it seems like they can't do anything that doesn't work. They just, you know, they just want money they just go out in the backyard and pick some off a tree. And, and it, it seems like it's that way with, with a lot of people. It seems that, that they've got everything that people, and, and those kind of people that, that seemingly have everything. You see, you, you go down through the edge of Mississippi and, and, and down and around uh, uh, Hartman County, Tennessee, and, and all back down in that direction, and, and uh, it, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a you know, remote area, and, and, you know, just it doesn't look like there's very much going on, especially in Walnut, Mississippi. If you haven't lived, if you haven't lived in Walnut, Mississippi, it may be better now, but it didn't used to be so hot. I can tell you that the Creasy family liked to starve. But everybody lives in a $200,000 home. Well, not everybody. And they got two or three pickup trucks and a car. I met four tractors. Well, actually, I didn't meet four tractors. I was between, behind one tractor, and three tractors was behind me coming down the Indian Creek the other day. And I can promise you, man, he was tearing limbs off trees on both sides of the road. Oh my God. Oh my Big old planters folded up, you know, and, and, and I'm thinking, good gracious. And big old John Deere's, and, and I thought of Elvis. I thought, that's what he needs. And, uh, Four wheel drive, big, big, you know, four, see, two, four, eight, eight of those great, big, huge wheels on four in the front, four in the back. And, and I, I just think, and, and you see somebody like that, and you think, you think, now that, that guy is successful. Right. I mean, you can look and tell that he is. He's driving, he probably, each one of those tractors probably cost a quarter of a million dollars. There's no telling what that tractor would cost, planner and all. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? And when you look at people like that, you look at people that it seems like they can just buy anything they want to buy and they can just do and give. And, 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 and I knew a person one time that, that it seemed like every time the car got dirty, they traded. It was my brother, he was in college and, and I guess he could afford it. He, he did it. And when you look at people like that, and just like, like Zach is here, the Bible said he was rich and he had a position because he was a tax collector and, and he was a chief among the publicans and you just naturally think that he was a successful person. And I found this out, Brother Mark, you probably already knew this, but but act but like you didn't know it. Uh, I found out also that in that day, the taxing that that Zacchaeus was involved in, the taxing was if the taxes was 5%, then he could charge 10%. And he would make 5% on your taxes. That sounds like today, don't it? So that's why the Bible said he was rich. He was very successful. He was a publican. He's standing there on this road that Jesus, the Bible said, was to pass that way. I don't know how he got his information where Jesus was going to pass through, but apparently he had gotten it somewhere because he's there waiting, and when the opportunity came, he couldn't see the Lord because he was a little man. He was short, small of statue, or short of statue. So he didn't let that discourage him. He turns and goes. Now here it is. You think a successful man like that, why in the world was he wanting to talk to anybody? All right, all right. He's successful. He, he's a tax collector. He's a, a chief of the publicans. He's rich. 
He's got everything going in his direction. And all of a sudden, though, he runs and he gets ahead of the crowd and climbs up into this tree because Christ was coming that way. He wanted to see Jesus. He is successful. People like that just look like they got it made. Zacchaeus was no different than anyone else. He had power. His position gave him power. He was not, he was not a flunky. There, but there was more to him than what we see. There was more to Zacchaeus than what meets the eye. By the world's standard, Zacchaeus was successful. He he, he was uh, a man that was that was very. Uh, if, if we looked at it, if you just read it, if you stop reading that in 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 verse number, about that verse number eight somewhere along in there. If you want to stop reading there, you'd say the man was really successful. Didn't have any need for anything or anybody. Now, I want to make some points here today, but there was more to that situation than what meets. The island. It's just like when you see people today that seemingly to the world standard are successful people. To the world standard, they got everything that they could possibly even want. They got nice hunting. There's nothing wrong with having anything nice. There's nothing wrong with that. You ain't got to be a bomb to be a, to be a Christian. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but there's something there that we're not, we were not seeing with Zachary. With all that he had, the wealth that he had, the the position, I I, I could almost visualize people wouldn't want to even meet him on the street because of what he was. You know, people don't like tax collectors. I know I don't. The person I like, I don't like his job. And so here it is. Brother Mark, by the standard of the world, he was successful. But I've learned through many years that you don't judge a book by the cover. You can't judge what this man was by just reading about what he had, about his riches. But when this little man that had a need now there was a need, hear me, there had to be a need somewhere. There had to be something in Zacchaeus' life that wasn't level. He felt some kind of a need, ladies and gentlemen, to get to where Jesus was. Something took place. And, but when he met Jesus, when this little man met this great big God, on that road that day, he's sitting up. I can see him perched up there on the limb. I'm sure he didn't have time to build a tree house. He's sitting up there on the limb. I used to deer hunt a, couple, a little bit, and I, and I didn't go. I didn't have all this high high dollar stuff. I had a rifle and a limb. And I climb up there, sit on the limb like a bird. I, I didn't have to have all. I knew I wasn't gonna be there that long. It don't take me that long to kill a deer. Right. One pull the trigger one time, you got your deer. Right. Why not? I want to go? Well, I won't go there. Here he's sitting up there with this limb, and he's watching. Sit. Here, here, here's the thing. You listen carefully to me. When the Bible teaches us, and I don't know how it says it for sure, but it teaches us that that Zacchaeus could not see Jesus. There was a crowd of people around him. Multitudes. One writer said they thronged him. And, so, and he, so he couldn't see Jesus. And so he had to take some kind of, of action to get above the crowd. Because the crowd held him down. And I, I just wonder today as I as I prepared this. I, I'm just wondering. I, in my mind, I'm looking around all over the congregation and I don't see near as many people now as I did in my mind. 
But it makes me wonder who is here today that is letting something keep you from Christ. He beat the odds. The crowd held him back. So he had to do something to make up the difference. So he went up a sycamore tree and got up there where he could see over. Sometimes we let things keep us from giving our life to God. Some little pet something or another that, that's in our life. When he met Jesus Christ that day, when that little man met that big God, God supplied the need that he was hungry for. Whatever it was. It wasn't money. It wasn't power. It wasn't, it wasn't fame. It was something inside that man that made him say, I've got to see this Jesus. Got to have Jesus. The people sometimes seem to be so successful. Even people like Zacchaeus and, and others. And, and I know in my life, before I come to Christ, before I got the Holy Ghost and got into church, I was miserable. I, I, I would get sick. I'd go to work. I'd get sick at work. I'd have to come home from work. Couldn't have told you nothing that was going on in my life as far as my body. I couldn't, I, I couldn't put my finger on nothing, but I was sick. I felt like I was going to throw up. I felt like I was going to be sick and I'd have to go home. And I almost lost my job because I wasn't a thing in the world but the fact that Jesus was passing by my way and I needed to see him. Right. It was called conviction. Here, Zacchaeus is, and he went up a tree. And when Christ comes, passes by and stops, he looks up, and you know what the, the Lord said? He supplied his need fully that day. When he comes to Jesus passing by, you have to make a difference in your life you have to be the one that recognizes and acknowledges I need to come to Jesus. Are you understanding? Uh, he had money. I'm going to repeat it again. He had, he had prestige. He had power. He had a good job. Everything seemingly was in his corner. But there was something lacking in his life. There's something lacking in your life today, young person, mom or dad. There's something lacking in your life if you don't have Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. You may be successful you may have all the stuff you think you need. You may be driving a fine automobile, living in a fine home, got a fine wife or got a fine husband. But if, if you don't know the Lord, something is lacking in your life. And if you will allow Jesus to pass by you and you'll cry out to him, he'll do you just like he did Zacchaeus. He'll fulfill that desire in your heart. Amen. It's a beautiful story of a little man that meets a big God. He was a man of power. This little man. This little man. People talk about little man syndrome. If you, little men, you can't get along with them because they think they're tough and they got to make a point. That's right. So they say. Right. I've heard that, Trina. I have heard it. But, you know, if you got a little bitty guy for a boss, you've got problems. Roger, your crew don't have no problem. That's what they say, sir. We have a supervisor that was a total nut. And I'm not going to tell you his name, and you don't, you guys back there don't. But he had the little man sitting. So this guy, here he is. He's, he's a seeker, he's a sinner seeking something. Say whatever we want to say about it. 
He called Zacchaeus. Well, he's a sinner seeking something. A man of power, man of position, man of wealth. A man of, because of his position, it gave him power because of what he had. People would probably dodge him. Stay with me for a few minutes. I'll get you out here. I know that my twin. But any lost person, any lost person, you need to remember one thing in your life. You don't remember nothing else without Jesus Christ. You're nothing. He had everything he thought he needed. He had wealth. He had position. He had, he had power. But without Christ, he recognized it himself. He was nothing. I want to tell this audience today, if you don't know the Lord, you don't have nothing. You may have savings. You may have 401Ks. You may have all kinds of, you know, you may, you may have all kinds of money. But if you're not saved today, you don't have nothing. Somebody else, honey, is going to spend your fortune. And I'm not against having money. Boy, I wish I had a little more of what I got. I'm not against anything like that. But I'm just telling you, Jesus said in John 15 and 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Jack, if I think, recognize that somehow or another. It doesn't matter what you think of yourself. It doesn't matter who you are, what side of the creek you crawled out on. It doesn't matter how you, you view yourself and, and how you think you're so tough and all. But I'm telling you, honey, without Jesus Christ, you are lost. I'd rather be an old-time Christian than anything I know. Mark 8, 36 said, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Verse 37 said, Or what shall a man exchange for or give in exchange for his soul? Even though Zacchaeus was wealthy and successful, he still lacked something. He knew something was missing in his life. I used to wouldn't want to go to church. I always loved the Pentecostal church. I've never, I've never been a part of any other denomination or, or faith or whatever you want to call it. I, I never had, never will, never would, never will. I just don't agree with it, and, and that ain't being critical of them. I just don't. I, I'm afraid I'd go to sleep. And I don't know that. I, I just don't never think I've ever been asleep in Pentecost church. If you do, then we need to. Well, some people are on medication; they can't handle it. So don't. You know. I'm not on medication. I ain't it. But I'm glad to be a part of the church. Now this writer said, teaching us that he knew something wasn't right. I've talked with people that go to churches or church knowing that something in their life was not right. Preacher preach, they get up and leave and never go back. I've talked with people that is, has more or less told me that they didn't know if God would even save them. I think we stood right here one night. Brother Paul Duke was here. Brother Mark. Others, I think maybe Joseph was here. Young man said he didn't know if he could be saved or not. Y'all remember that? We prayed for him. I'm telling you, the world is full of people some, that something is missing in their life. They're, I'm talking, I'm preaching to people right now that something in your life is missing. You do not have what you want today. You, you're not where you want to be. Many people take those that desire that 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 uh, longing in, inside of here, maybe not even knowing what it is, maybe not even recognizing that it's God. 
do they take that and they try to drown that with alcohol. They try to pour it full of whiskey or beer and thinking that's going to take care of it. And it does for a little while. But when the buzz is gone and the drunkenness is gone and the cork's back in the bottle and you get up the next right. morning with an exaggerated headache, the problem is still there. You didn't drown it. All you done was water it. And they try to... They try to cover it up with drugs. They try to pop pills. They try to do all kinds of things. They'll go to head shrinkers. They'll go to psychiatrists. They'll do all kinds of things and spend all kinds of money trying to get something out of their life that God has put in there. It's a call to conviction. And he recognizes, I'm not where I ought to be. Something in my life is missing. Honey, it ain't a pill. It ain't a drug. It ain't a bottle of booze. It's called Jesus Christ. That's what's missing in people's lives today. Hallelujah. They know he knew he needed something. And when he got to that point that he knew he needed to see Jesus, the crowd didn't bother him. He put everything aside. He reached the place where he had to give God everything in his life. The Bible said he sought to see Jesus. He wanted to see him. If you ever come to the place that you want to see Jesus, if you ever come to the place where you want, that you desire, you want it more than you want your food, Honey, you'll give whatever it takes to get to seek Jesus. Zacchaeus may not have fully understood what was happening in his heart, but he knew something that he needed and wanted and had to find Jesus. Somebody told him about him, had to. Maybe he attended a church service. Or maybe he sat in the back. Nobody could see him because he couldn't see nobody. Maybe that's what it was. He heard something. He saw something. He felt something. Something was different about this preacher. This preacher wasn't the same as just any old preacher. He didn't have this handshake religion. He had this Holy Ghost religion. Are you hearing me? And he recognized, I got to find him. Something is missing in my life. We got a text message this week from a Baptist pastor that's been tuning in on our YouTube services. One of our songs that they sing, of all songs, no reflection on the Baptist, please don't, don't you misunderstand me tonight or today. Of all songs, this Baptist preacher wanted to get the lyrics to and, and, and get, get the chords to so he could get his praise singers uh, in his church singing it was it's all in him. It's all in him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in him. He's God in the Father. Are you hearing me? Somebody, right, I believe, I believe. I hope he reads this one. I hope he watches this one. Yes. Brother Pastor, I believe there's something inside of you telling you something's missing. They got something that I don't have. So it was with Zacchaeus. May not fully understand. But your greatest need today is Jesus Christ. Lord, I wish we could get Jesus in Washington. Lord, I wish we could get somebody, somebody up there praying. I'm not talking about bowing my head for a few minutes of silence. I'm talking about get an apostolic preacher that knows how to be on the wall and pray. So it was with Zacchaeus. Deep down, deep down and all the way down his gallbladder. He recognized, I don't have something. Something. I heard that man preach in that service the other night. I saw him touch those blinded, milky white eyes and they opened up. I'm missing something. The Bible doesn't say he could have been a, a member of the board. 
in the first self-righteous church. That's where the squirrel went berserk. He could have been on that board. But I mean, he recognized, come on, this is carefully to me. Why else would he say, I got to fly, I got to go see where I can see him. He wasn't wanting to put his, pe his picture in the leader. He was wanting something all of a sudden. All of a sudden, the crowd was too big and he couldn't get through the crowd. Was there and he couldn't get through the crowd. The Bible says because he was a little man, he couldn't see him. So he had to he had to overcome some obstacles. Let me tell you something, teenager. If you're gonna live for God, you're gonna have to overcome some obstacles in your life. Somebody's gonna poke fun at you. Somebody in high school will will make fun of you because you're you're out you're out for what? Somebody's gonna poke fun. Before this man could ever get to Jesus, he had to overcome some obstacles. He couldn't see over the crowd. It was an obstacle. Crowds still keep people from Christ. Let me tell you what keeps people from God. Girlfriends and boyfriends. And just friends. Well, if I get too involved, they won't like me. Honey, they don't like you anyway. Right. If they liked you, they would try to pull you away from from God. If they, I'm a preacher. Man. If they liked you, they would try to drag you out of church on Wednesday night. You'd be down here Wednesday night church. If they liked you, they would try to convince you that the way you dress, young lady, is not right. They would envy you. They don't like you. Well, I wish sometimes I, I wish sometimes I had guts. I'd like to preach. Some backslidden hypocrite in the church going to keep you out of church? That's part of the crowd. Where do you find a hypocrite? You find him in the church. You don't find him in a bar stool. You don't find him down in the red light district of town. You find a hypocrite sitting on the pews looking at everybody else and making fun and trying to keep you from seeing the Lord. That's where the hypocrite is, young man. The hypocrite is that young lady that wants to keep you out of the house of God. The hypocrite is that young man that wants to keep you, young lady, out of the house of God. Let me tell you, you need to make up your mind. I'm missing something. Hallelujah. No loose living, cold hearted, wicked church member worth going to hell for. No boyfriend, no girlfriend, nobody is worth missing out and going to hell for. You need Jesus. You need to get above the crowd. You need to get above the obstacles and find Jesus Christ. Don't let the crowd stop you. Don't let nobody hinder you. Amen, Hallelujah. Amen. There's something else stands between people and, and Jesus. You'll find it recorded from Isaiah 59 in verse number 2. But your iniquity have separated between you and your God and your sins and hid his face from you that he will not hear. This little man allowed nothing. Nothing. Not the crowd. Not his conditions. Nothing to stand in his way. And we need to understand our condition. Our, our whatever it is that we that we do, we don't we can't afford to let it stand between us and God. Do you care enough? Do you, is it, it, it? Have you thought about it enough? I want to put you to thinking. Do you care enough about your soul and where you're going to spend eternity? Is it serious enough that you're willing to take whatever it is and drop it? Climb above it and go to Jesus. Will you pay whatever price? Are you willing to turn that little pet sin that that so many of your friends says, 
What well, ain't nothing wrong Come on. with your smoking a little wacky backy? Oh, no. Makes you feel like King Kong. Oh. You're just Chia. <laughs> Are you understanding? Are you willing? Yeah. Have you even thought about it? Right. Have you even given any consideration? I'm going to try to say this and then I'm going to try to close. I, when Jesus walks up to that sycamore tree, and he already knows where his eye is. No, he, he saw him climbing, but he didn't see him literally. He, he already knew. He knew all about Zacchaeus, brother. He knew everything there was to know about him. He knew he was a task player. He knew he was a crook. Most rich people are crooks. I said most, man. Not he knew about it. Right. Here's the good part. He said, Zacchaeus, I've got to put this part in. He said, make haste. It's almost like he's saying, I don't have long Zacchaeus. Come on, let's get this over with. Right. Come on down here. And the Bible said he made haste. Yeah. And here's the part that just, what well, all this stands out to me. When his feet hit that ground, when he left that limb, yep. when the time he hit that ground, he repented. Right. How do you know, preacher? Because he said, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods. I give to him. That's repentant. Buddy, when you take a man it gets in that pocket, he's repentant. Am I right? And if I've taken anything from any man he, he had, by false, false accusation, I'm going to give it back to him four times. If I took a hundred dollars, brother Bud, I'm going to give him four hundred. Now that's repentance. So from the limb to the ground, he made things right with God. He repented and he changed his lifestyle. What? Soon. Just like that. It's changed. I'm not going to cheat anymore. When a man or a woman repents, then that's different. Even as the Son of Man came not to minister to, but, or not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. When Jesus stopped there that day, something happened in his life. No man come up unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And I will raise him up in the last day. When he stooped, when he stopped there, he already knew all about that. Here's the deal. It was an urgent situation because he said, make haste and come down. That to me, he's saying it's urgent. We are living in an urgent time. Yes, yes we are. You don't know. Whereas James said, 4 14, ye know not what shall be on tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then it vanishes. This is urgent. You don't have time to wait till tonight. This is urgent. This is serious. The Proverb 27 1 said, Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You don't know what's going on tomorrow. Jesus is interested in one thing. He's not interested in your bank account, your checkbooks, your, your 401ks. Your, he don't even, he's not even interested on how much you're going to will to the church when you die. That doesn't bother me. He's interested in this ticker. How much thought have you given in the last 24 hours of where you'll spend eternity? How much thought have we given? Christ wants our heart. Zacchaeus obeyed the Lord's call. He came down and so must we. And he freely, the Bible said he received him joyfully. He freely gave himself to him. You come to God, you've got to do it freely. Amen. 
I can't come back there. I'm not going to come back there and talk to you when it comes. If I talk to you into it, the devil will talk to you out of it. When you come to God, you've got to get up on your feet, honey, by yourself. If you're able to get up, if you're able to walk, you've got to make that step. I can't make that step. He received him joyfully. He obeyed him and he freely gave himself his whole life changed. I believe the next tax date was different. I don't believe he let the pen slip. Because he said, I'm going to get it back to him four times. And I'm sure he didn't want to go through that again. That probably cost him a bundle of money, Brother Roger, just to get things straightened out. You ain't got to bring a checkbook this morning when you come. I'm fixing to give an altar call and there's going to be people repenting here this morning. But you ain't got to have a checkbook to do it. All you've got to have is your heart. Yes, sir. Sister Casey, can you play for me on that piano? Do you feel up to it? You can do it. I know you can. Jesus stands at the door. One writer said, And knock, Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock at any man hear my voice and open the door. I will come in to him. you got to open the door. I, you got to open the door. You got to hear it. You got to open. That's what Zachary's done. He heard it. He opened. He, he obeyed it. He got out of the tree. He repented. He changed his lifestyle. He stood and said, Lord, I'll give everything back that I cheated. That, I, that everything I cheated people out of. There was a change that took place in his life. Some of us, some of you are just like Zachary's. You need to meet the Master. You've never met him yet. He'll change your life. He'll change everything about you. He'll change the way you think. He'll change the way you act. If you'll come to Jesus, he'll go home with you. He said to Zacchaeus, he said, today I must abide in thy house. I think he went home with it. What do you think? I believe it's what the scripture is teaching me. If you'll come to Jesus today, young person, he'll go home with you. Things will be different. Mom and dad will be nicer to you. Everything, everything will be different. Jesus will take charge of your entire life. You can be that little man that met that great big God. What about you? Have you given any thought? Is there anything? Have you given any thought to your life? Have you thought anything about? What about? You know what? I was telling Brother Johnny, I was, my wife and I were talking, I believe it was last night or yesterday afternoon. This is uh, three pastors that I've sat on that we buried within the last, just the last several few years. We, we passed it. Well, Brother Grady Williams was the man that, that I was converted under. Here several years ago, I preached his funeral. Brother Dwayne Harry was the man that that I was, I done my ministry under. I started my ministry under Brother Grady, but I'd only been like a short month or two when Brother Wheat, Brother Harry came and took the church. Brother Harry mentored me. I co-pastored with him three and a half years. Well, as you know, I preached his funeral here just a couple of months back. May, may not have been that long. And then Brother Wayne Isbell was the man that signed my application to get my minister's license at the United Pentecostal Church. We sat under him for, for a good long time and they buried him this afternoon. Let me tell you, death is no respecter of a person. It's coming. It's coming. Have you given any thought? And I'm looking at myself and I'm thinking, dear Lord, I'm that next generation. I'm the next generation. I buried three pastors. Are you hearing me? I'm 70 years old. I will be if I don't die before Friday. Are you listening? Have we given any thought? Young people, have you given any thought? Have any thought at all? Where will you spend eternity? Stand with me. Stand with me. You can see Jesus today. He's passing by. Just like he passed that day for Zacchaeus. He's passing by this morning. He's in the building. Come and join me in the front. If you want to pray, if you want to repent, talk to God, come and join me right now. In the name of Jesus. Come and pray.
floods my soul. Something happened.
Praise the Lord. Ain't the Lord wonderful? Clap your hands to Jesus today. Praise the Lord. Any birthday? Good. Nobody getting up. Uh-oh. Come on, birthday boy. Come on up here, Father. Come here, man. You're going to stand by me. Right here. They can't see you, you're a little statue. <laughs> How about here with Brother Chris? With my grandma come. Oh. Okay, stand right there. We're going to guess your age. Sing to me, son. Right. Can anybody guess his age? You got a birthday? Yeah. All right. Let's get the little guy for it. Who can get it? Ten. Four. Ten. Four. I know this is a little older for <laughs> Who can guess? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> guess, Chris. How old is young man? 13? <laughs> Anybody else? 16. 16. 15. Over there. 15. All right. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Are you fashion? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> when he's dying, I'll play. Next Sunday, we're going to be honoring our senior. We don't have but one senior this year. Uh, uh, Jasmine. Is she here today? No. She's not here today? Well, we're going to be honoring her. Can you get her here next Sunday? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to be honoring her next Sunday morning. Hannah's going to have a, a slideshow. I take a little time now. Next Sunday is Memorial Day weekend. And uh, we normally omit the services on Sunday night. I'll make up my mind between now and then. Uh, but we all gonna be honoring our senior and we're gonna receive a love offering, okay? And uh, you just give what you would like to give to our senior. Uh, if you have it to give, if you don't, then it won't be a big deal. But uh, it might be a big deal to her, but it won't be a big deal to me. And uh, because we'll make it up. And just gonna bless her with, uh, with a love offering. Honoring her and uh, for her achievement. Uh, it's 
So I think it's just great when young people uh, graduate. And I think she's already got plans that she's going to college, UT Knoxville. I'm glad she didn't decide to go to Alabama. Right? <laughs> but anyway, so, so remember that. Keep that in mind. Have church tonight at 5 30. Yes, sir, Chris. Wait, Nick, buddy. Pray for Ty. Is Uncle Matt? Now, we're playing, I'm sorry, we're playing for Uncle Matt, not Kyle, right? Okay, Kyle's Uncle Matt got a drinking problem. Okay, let's pray for him right now. Uncle Matt. Okay, everybody pray for Uncle Matt and we'll be dismissed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Uncle Matt today. God, that you will touch him, Lord, and uh, touch that drinking problem. God, and save his soul. Fill him with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Put your arm around him, God. And let him know, Lord, that you're there with him. In the name of Jesus. Lord, and take us to our homes. Bring us back in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.